Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic, debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have a pretty interesting show for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel here. So let's get into this topic uh, here. Let's get into this topic here today. Um, I was actually going through the internet and I came across a report I believe it was from fadeawayworld.net that was centered on some information that was released by NBA Central via Lev Akabas. Um, and basically, this account pretty much produces a lot of content centered on or information or articles, however you want to call it, centered on um, statistics in sports, sports statistics, right? And I went through some of the information and a lot of it, to be totally honest with you, uh, was quite startling as you know the nba uh has been in flux in terms of the way it's changing this game and this was something that we actually discussed in a recent show we produced that was centered on some comments or excuse me a conversation between former nba player hall of famer most likely and kevin garnett and commissioner adam silvers right and in this interview kevin garnett asked adam silvers plainly do you think that this style of basketball, meaning the faster basketball, it's not so physical, this, this not so physical game, do you think that it's working, right? And basically, Adam Silver said, absolutely is working, numbers are up. He also spoke about how a more physical game would impair um, highly skilled players' ability to score, right? Which is interesting because... From my understanding, I thought this was the greatest ever. This was the greatest era ever in the '90s. Those guys were a bunch of bus drivers and truck drivers, which, and, and before that, which is which is quite interesting. So he said that. So I was going through this article this morning, and this was a specific report, and this report has some pretty startling information because it was covering data about viewership over the last 30 years in terms of NBA regular season TV viewership trends. And some of the information I discovered here, I have to be quite honest with you, was absolutely startling. But before we get into that information, this video is brought to you by sponsor Aura, who's also the official sponsor of the T-Wolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who is the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around around in the dark web and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened in addition Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at Aura.com slash Dreamers Pro and when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below also know that you're supporting this channel thank you so let's just get into this first graphic here that we want to put up here in this first graphic it says 30 year 30 year nba regular season tv viewership uh trend right so i just looked at the recent uh, data this morning and i found out the average viewership per game is 1.6 million so if you look at some of these um gra bars rather <laughs> you'll see that in the 90s, mid 90s, you see the red where it has MJ's back. You see the average viewers like I'm, I'm going to assume that's between 2.5 to 3 million. Then you have 3 million. Um, then you have what is it above 2 million, above 2 million. Then you have the lockout season when it spiked it as well. And then you have the 2000s. It was still above 2 million. It dipped under 2 million again. Then it went back up. Then what happened? It dropped towards the late um, um, 2000, uh, mid 2000, excuse me. Then it went up in 2005. Um, that was LeBron's rookie season. Then it kind of trended up, but it was still always under 2 million viewers. Then it spiked up when LeBron moved to Miami. But when it spiked up, it hit the 2 million mark. 
in terms of an average, kept that average, but it, it, it could only sustain that for a number of years. And then it dropped. And then from that point forward, if you look at LeBron to Miami, to LeBron to Lakers in present day, if you were just to put a, like a line or like a slope, you would see that this graph is actually declining, which means that NBA viewership is actually decreasing. So whenever they say, oh, viewership is up 1% over last year, they're talking about a previous low uh, that it beat. So that made me curious. And I was like, well, let me, let me, let me, let me comb through the internet a little bit further and look at some other data. Right. And I decided to comb through and I came across some finals viewership numbers. And as a matter of fact, the highest viewed game, this NBA playoffs, whether you believe it or not, was Stephen Curry and the Sacramento Kings. I think that game, I forgot the amount of viewers. Do I want to say it was 9.8 million? I could be wrong, but they had the highest uh, rated games in terms of viewership these playoffs so far. So I started combing through the data here and I started looking at some of these average viewer numbers in the finals because the finals is the biggest stage in this particular sport. And in the 2022 finals, the average is around 12 million viewers per game with the high in, uh, what is it? Game six, about 14 million. Now that was up because the year prior in 2021 with the bucks and Suns, they bear, I think they, they average under 10, 10, 10 million viewers a game. The Orlando bubble, that was the worst one when you had averages of about 7 million, 7 million, 6 million, 5 million. And in game six, it was 8.2 million. It was a terrible, terrible year. So then I started combing through the graph and I'm like, well, where are the highest years? Then I saw some of the high years. You had the 2004 um, finals between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Detroit Pistons. That was game five, I believe. Let me see. Game four. And that game brought in 20 million viewers. Then I went to go look at the Golden State Warriors. The first time those two teams met with the Warriors and the Cavs, it was averaging 19 million, 17.7 million, 19 million, 18 million, 19 million, 20 million. Then in 2016, it was about the same in the 20s. No, in the, in the high teens. And then in 2017, it was 20 and uh, 24.4, which was the highest game. I think that was game one, two, three, four, five, six. But then I discovered that the highest viewed basketball games were in the 1998 finals, where in game one, the viewership number was 29 million. Game two was 27 million, 26.7. Game three was 26.3 million. And then um, I think you had game four. Or, anyway, and in the last game, because I'm not sure about this date, I think this may be game five was 30 million and in game six it was 35.6 million viewers and to this day that game six holds the record for the most viewed game the most viewed finals game in nba history and this begs a question how is this even possible how is it even possible that almost what 2008 2018 20 plus years ago a game that was viewed 20 plus years ago um would be getting more viewership now some people say well it's because now in today's game and today you can watch the game in different places what are those places what are those places the nba first of all for the people that may be confused about how this thing works the nba the data you should be concerned with is the, the viewership data that is related to the TV uh, TV stations, which are ABC, TNT, ESPN, or CBS, whoever it is, the ones that are calling these games. And the data for these games, when we're talking about viewership, is derived from ABC, CBS, ESPN, ESPN2, and then, of course, you have those other networks. So when they're talking about TV deals, they're not talking about no, 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 no streaming. They're talking about TV deals. And I think the last one they had was a $25 billion deal. I think the new one they just inked. I could be wrong. I'm not sure if they actually um, completed it yet. was worth $75 billion. That's where the money is, really. And then, of course, in ticket sales. So these numbers show a decline. The average viewer now is 1.6 million viewers per game. At least that's what that data shows. And to me, it begs the question... How was MJ and these guys in the league able to 
pull in so many people to watch, number one. Number two, it also reveals that fans seem to prefer a more physical game. That this run and gun, shooting up and down, three-point layup line game that we're watching, people are not really turned on by that. And it was exhibited in the All-Star game, which, which was an absolute embarrassment of a basketball game. And head coach Mike Malone said that was the most, well, he said that was the most embarrassing, well, that was the worst basketball game he has ever seen in his entire life. Conducted by today's present-day All-Stars. So what happened? What's the explanation for this? Why are these numbers skewing this way? Why? To me, I just think it still speaks to the greatness of MJ. And this is something else you have to factor into the GOAT debate, which is impact, cultural impact. Who, what basketball player had a bigger cultural impact on the sport than MJ? Name the guy. Name the guy. Michael Jordan was a cultural phenomenon. He's still probably one of the most maybe the 10 most famous people on earth him cristiano ronaldo maybe the british royal family and whoever else you can think of i mean he's there he's at that level and what's interesting is that this is about this is coming from a guy that never posts on social media he never talks you never see him and nevertheless he still has this incredible amount of fame and it was exhibited in the uh in the what is it the 75th anniversary game in cleveland the guy walks out and he got the biggest applaud in Cleveland. So what does that tell you? And I think that anyone trying to argue against MJ's status uh, as the GOAT of basketball, it's, a, it's just an uphill climb. And I think it's a pointless endeavor. Like, like, why would you put yourself through that stress? Why would you go fight it? Why would you go fight a battle you know you can't win? Well, I just want to show you that I can, I can, I can do it. Can't win. To me, it is absolutely incredible. That MJ's, MJ's teams and those Bulls still hold the record. It's absolutely incredible. But I'll tell you what. For those that say, hey, no, no, no. The biggest thing since sliced bread in the NBA, um, for example, the people that believe LeBron is a goal, let's, let's, let's do a quick challenge. Let's do a bet. LeBron's last game that he's going to play as an NBA player, because Michael Jordan, apparently that was his last season, do you reckon that that game will get over 35 million viewers to watch that game over the, the, the 1998 Chicago Bulls? If you believe that, we'll wait and see. But I doubt 35. I doubt 37 million people are going to watch LeBron retire the way 35.6 million people thought MJ was going to retire. Let it go. MJ to go, man. Let it go.